Give him another go, Ned. That's my father. And my Uncle Benjamin. Keep your shield up, or I'll ring your head like a bell. Come. Try it again. Drive at me. Keep your shield up, or I'll ring your head like a bell. Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with some juice to get you through the long night. I just wanna thank you guys right now because you have been showing my dream series so much love. I love you. But anyway, so my Overwatched series got pushed back. I really don't even want to address that right now, but I figured that since it did get pushed back and I did rewatch a ton of episodes, then I have the perfect video for y'all. And that is my top five hidden gems, moments of foreshadowing, book odes, and payoffs in the Game of Thrones series so far. This is going to be so much fun to do. I'm going to do my top five so far and then some honorable mentions in no particular order. Let's go. Number five, time to fly. When I was a child, an uncle asked what gift I wanted for my name day. I begged him for one of you. It wouldn't even have to be a big dragon, I told him. It could be little, like me. Now, this one is a little crazy, but I have to show you this. So there's this big following of people who believe that Tyrion is a Targaryen. Matter of fact, comment, is Tyrion a Targaryen or is Tyrion a Lannister? I actually don't subscribe to the theory that Tyrion is a Targaryen. I can't ignore the evidence that has been presented towards Tyrion being a Targaryen. So Tyrion has all kinds of dreams of dragons. Um, King Aerys was around Joanna Lannister, around Tyrion's conception, Joanna Lannister is Tyrion's mother and supposedly Ares was in love with Joanna and took certain liberties. And then Tyrion was also born so grotesque and Tyrion allegedly had a tail much like Daenerys's baby. But anyway, Tyrion also has white hair and mismatched eyes and people theorize that Tyrion is actually the third head of the dragon. And fun fact, Tyrion, Jon, and Daenerys have some things in common, but one thing is that all of their mothers died in childbirth. One thing that the show does really well is they put things in plain sight for payoff later. For example, in season one, they showed us a secret carved into the walls of Castle Black in a scene with John way before R plus L equals J was revealed. It showed us who his parents were. The show writers gave us a clue on the wall. Do you see that RL? That was a nod to R plus L equals J. When we see the RL on the wall, John is specifically talking about not knowing his mother and more importantly, not being a bastard. What's my name? John Snow. And why is my surname Snow? Because you're a bastard from the North. I never met my mother. My father wouldn't even tell me her name. But the writing on the wall is saying, you're not a bastard, R plus L equals J. And this was way back in season one. So let's look at Tyrion and something specific from season one about Tyrion and writings on the wall. So when Tyrion is in a sky cell in the veil, you can see writing on the wall that says, Time to fly. So is this a nod to Tyrion being a Targaryen? And, and will he really fly a dragon? When we see this writing on the wall, guess what Tyrion is professing in that scene? He's professing that he's a Lannister. Have you ever heard the phrase, rich as a Lannister? Of course you have. You're a smart man. You know who the Lannisters are. I am a Lannister. Tyrion, son of Tywin. Just like the scene with Jon, Jon was saying he was a bastard, but R plus L was on the wall. 
In this scene, Tyrion is saying he's a Lannister, but the wall is saying not so fast. Time to fly, perhaps a dragon. Number four, eyes you'll close forever. I see a darkness in you, and in that darkness, eyes staring back at me. Brown eyes, blue eyes, green eyes. Eyes you'll shut forever. We will meet again. Melisandre not only says that they will meet again, which that has to happen, they have to meet again. She says this, there's a darkness in you. This is an ode to the ghost of High Heart, but there are multiple layers of foreshadowing here. The statement could just be a foreshadowing of her future with the Faceless Men and Arya becoming an assassin. And the eyes are her victim's eyes. The music that is playing while Melisandre is speaking is definitely the Bravos theme. And it's playing before we go to Bravos. But let's pay attention to the eye colors. Green, blue, and brown. Just about anyone in the story can have these eye colors, but someone on Arya's list has green eyes. And if it's up to Arya, Arya would shut them forever. And that's Cersei Lannister. And Cersei just happens to be on Arya's kill list. I thought you might go to King's Landing. So did I. Why would you go back there? Cersei's on her list of names. Another of those eye colors is brown. I'm sure she's killed enough frays to hit one that had brown eyes, green eyes, and blue eyes, but it's actually the blue eyes that interest me. White walkers have blue eyes. I mean, that's obvious, but there are two other people who have blue eyes that Arya is with right now, and that is Sansa and Bran. Bran did look nervous handing off the cat's ball blade to Arya. So who is she going to kill with the cat's ball and whose eyes could Arya close forever? I definitely think Arya may be the one to kill Cersei. Number three, a magical sword. You guys probably know by now that my favorite, favorite, favorite is the prologue of Game of Thrones. I think it's one of the most important chapters of the entire A Song of Ice and Fire series. Game of Thrones production actually gave Waymar the sword that he had in the prologue. This sword was so important to the whole entire story. So the show changed a lot about how this cold butchery actually went down. I have a whole entire theory about this. I've also talked about this in a podcast, but I'll kind of summarize it here for you. So let me tell you why this sword and Waymar are important. So the White Walkers specifically target Waymar Royce. Will is killed by a reanimated Waymar Royce, not a White Walker. And it's actually Garrod that escapes. So Waymar Royce is a lordling from Runestone. He has first man blood, a fancy horse, a sable cloak, moleskin gloves, and a beautiful sword that is castle forged. Jewels glittered in its hilt, and the moonlight ran down the shining steel. It was a splendid weapon, castle forged and new made from the look of it. Waymar Royce also shares the same characteristics or features as a Stark of Winterfell. The White Walkers were hunting for Jon Snow. Jon Snow is the only person in the story that wears moleskin gloves. They were hunting for the prince who was promised and his magical sword, and they mistaked it for Sir Waymore Royce. So the White Walkers weren't just roaming around looking for someone to kill. It was Sir Waymore's sword, moleskin gloves, looks, and blood that made the White Walkers come on him. It was a mistaken identity. They thought he was Jon. Number two, spirit animals. Animal symbolism is all through Game of Thrones. The first one is the direwolves in the snow. Their mother is dead, a direwolf, the sigil of House Stark, killed by a stag's antler, and the stag is dead too. This scene is very important to the entire story. The direwolves themselves are pups alone in the world and they foreshadow the Stark children. And it eventually happens to the Stark children. I could dissect the direwolves in the snow all day, but I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna do a separate video on just that. 
But we get more animal symbolism when we meet Tywin. He is literally butching a stag, which could be looked at as foreshadowing his victory against both Baratheon brothers. Then let's look at the dragons. Drogon is the color of House Targaryen and also the spitting image of Balerion the Black Dread, which foreshadowed Daenerys being Aegon-like and coming to Westeros to bend all kind of knees. Rhaegal is named for Rhaegar and most likely foreshadows that Jon would become his rider. The golden dragon was named for Viserion. His eyes were even described as molten gold, like the crown Drogo gave Viserys. And he was the smallest and weakest of all of her dragons, much like Viserys. There is also Balerion the Black Cat, who lives in the Red Keep and hates Lannisters. He is believed to be the cat that once belonged to Rhaenys Targaryen. I mean, the spirit animals are everywhere. Animal foreshadowing is all over. Can you think of any more animals that may be possible foreshadowing? Shadowing or hidden gems? Number one, an old to patch face. I know it's no secret that Patchface is one of my favorite book characters, but in Game of Thrones Season 3, Episode 5, we get a beautiful ode to Patchface through Shireen. Shireen beautifully sings a Patchface jingle from the books. They actually have a whole song on a whole lot of jingles that Shireen did, and I'll play that clip for you right here. So Patchface never made the show, but he was a creepy slave from Volantis that like died and washed up on the beaches of Storm's End and started singing creepy prophetic riddles that always came true. I have an entire video on him and you can check that out if you would like. And the shadows come to dance, my lord, and all of that creepy shit. But Patchface was a fixture in little Shireen's life, and Shireen singing Patchface's riddle in a song on the show is an awesome hidden gem in season three. It's also interesting that she's singing that the birds have scales, and the birds with scales are dragons. And Melisandre wants a dragon badly. I love it. Also, we have Cersei last season accusing Daenerys of doing the things that her family did in season one. When the guy comes from the Riverlands to talk to Ned, he tells Ned all of the things that Cersei is telling the other lords that Daenerys will do. If the Mad King's daughter takes the Iron Throne, she'll destroy the realm as we know it. Thraki heathens who will burn your villages to the ground. They burn most everything in the Riverlands. Our fields, our granaries, our homes. Rape and enslave your women. They took our women, and then they took them again. And when they was done, they butchered them as if they was animals. And butcher your children without a second thought. They covered our children in pitch and lit them on fire. Then we have Jory. Jory foreshadowed his death while talking to Jaime Lannister. We've met before, you know, have we? Strange, I've forgotten. The Siege of Pike. We fought side by side one afternoon. That's where you got your scar. Aye. One of the Greyjoys nearly took my eye. <laughs> This was a fun video to do. I have so many more. I've rewatched and rewatched and rewatched. And I'm still going to be doing Overwatched. It just got pushed back until July. So it's actually going to come out in July. I have so many of these moments of foreshadowing and weird things that you've never seen and hidden gems and all of that stuff. I just have so much of it written down. So just let me know if you want me to do this again and let me know of some things that you caught that I may have missed. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the sweet summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children, have a good day.
Shame. 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 